Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you a repair to a very common problem in the Armour Brushless models. Well guys, before we get too much further, I just wanted to say thank you very much for stopping in and taking a look at another one of my videos. And if you benefit from this in any way, please consider giving me a thumbs up and a subscription that would really help me out. Well, with that out of the way, let's get right to it. What you see in front of you is an Arma Typhon. Now, this Arma Typhon has a pretty common problem that we see in a lot of RC models, where when we power on the system and we pull the trigger, you get a kind of a nasty noise and the vehicle doesn't really go anywhere. Now, this most commonly is something in the spur gear assembly, which is located here. Um, and we can do a little bit more diagnostic just to make sure that it's in that area. If we are, were to stop one of these tires, I'm going to stop this um, tire that's furthest away and roll this tire. Um, this will make the drivetrain bind up and you can see the rear tires that are turning. So we know that the issue is not located in the differentials, which would be front and rear, but instead something in the center drivetrain. Now my assumption here is, is that we need to replace this spur gear um, and this is arm part number 310947. Uh, this may or may not be our problem, but we won't know until we actually open it up. It might be just more of an alignment issue, uh, but let's take this apart and see how we go. Now the tools that we'll need are going to be some kind of an Allen wrench assembly. So these are um, power driver tips that I use. You'll need a 2 and a 2.5. This is a pretty nifty tool. If you've seen my channel, you know that this tool is something I use pretty often. This is unique in that if you were to hit the button, the tool just buzzes. It doesn't actually rotate until you begin rotating the tool. So this gyroscopic technology is a pretty neat thing to have. If you're going to be using this kind of tool, make sure that you are very careful not to strip out screws. A beneficial tool will be some kind of a flathead screwdriver, and I'll show you what that will be used for a little bit later. To remove the motor pod in this model, we simply need to take out one screw. It's this little screw that's located right here in the center of the chassis. The tool that we'll need to remove that screw is a two and a half millimeter Allen wrench. Once that screw is removed, it would be beneficial to go ahead and remove the battery pack. Now this red assembly that is located right here this red assembly slides out toward the camera here and this is where this flathead screwdriver can be beneficial to give you a little bit more leverage to kind of slide that out this doesn't take a lot of force but you do need to kind of work with it a little bit to slip that out of the chassis once that's out of the way you can lay this back you will also need to slide the whole motor assembly out toward the front of the vehicle um, and this will also be another useful tool with that flathead screwdriver the goal here is to lift the two tabs and slide the motor assembly forward, but if you get a little dirt under the motor mount assembly, that will cause some binding and make it tough for you. So if you were to slip this forward here, you just get this flathead screwdriver and let that screwdriver kind of be a prying force for you to kind of slip that out. <clears throat> Work from left to right as you put a little gentle pressure. You don't want to break anything. Once the assembly is loose, your drive shaft here is spring loaded. You can pull it toward the front of the vehicle and then the whole motor assembly comes out of your model. <clears throat> Once you remove the motor assembly, you can get the buggy out of the way because we won't need that for a little while. Now that the motor and transmission assembly are removed from our vehicle, if we look underneath, we can see the exposed spur gear and see the damage that there is there. And that just confirms that we need to replace the spur gear as I suspected. There are three screws that are needed to open the transmission assembly. Now don't be alarmed, I'm calling this a transmission assembly, but it really is just a gearbox. There are only two gears inside of here. So let's remove those three screws with a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench. Engine. 
once those screws are loosened, we can remove our cover here. Now as a pro tip, I do like to keep the screws in the places that they belong. This way they're easy to keep up with and you don't get lost. Looking at the gears we have here, we can determine the cause of this gear stripping. And if you look pretty closely, you can see where the gears align. See how much movement there is in here? That movement is indicating that the gear mesh is not properly set. And this could have been more of an impact related issue where the whole assembly shifted. Uh, and that's what caused this gear to strip. So we need to make sure that we repair that as well. Now with that done, we can remove our slipper clutch assembly. Now that our slipper clutch assembly is removed from our model, there is a two millimeter Allen wrench in the center of this hub right here. We need to remove that hub in order to disassemble the slipper clutch assembly. Now before we do that, we need to pay very close attention to how this is assembled. So the, the gear itself has these little notches here. Those do face the front of our slipper clutch assembly. Um, and as we disassemble this, again, pay very close attention to how things are ordered so that you get it assembled correctly. Taking apart our slipper clutch assembly, you can see the, the front of our slipper clutch plate. There's also a slipper pad that is located inside here. So our slipper clutch pad is on the front. And if you'll notice, I'm laying this out in order. Now we can remove our gear and you see there's another pad located in the inside. So we'll need to remove that as well. That's a little tricky. <clears throat> so again, laying this out in a very specific order helps us reassemble it when we get time to put it back together again. Now that we have our brand new spur gear here, uh, remember we noted that these little notches faced the front of the slipper assembly. So we'll go ahead and reinstall our pad here as well as our slipper plate. And since we didn't take any of this apart, this makes it pretty easy just to slip it all together. But before we do that, we're almost forgetting our second pad here. Now you'll notice that that slipper pad that does need to align with the gear. So make sure you get things carefully aligned here. and reinstall our screw. Now, always be careful not to tighten screws with this power driver because that can cause damage to things. I always like to hand tighten. The factory setting on this slipper clutch is one and a half turns out from bottom. It's very important that we don't tighten, so I'm just going down till it stops. And then we're going to come back one and a half turns. So this is a half a turn. This is one turn. And this is one half turn. Now this may still require some adjustment. That is something that you'll have to test when you get things back in place. Um, and that will just require a little bit of tightening on that screw once things are reassembled. Now that our slipper clutch is completely reassembled, we can reinstall it in our transmission case here. And just as I mentioned earlier in the video, this, um, this large amount of movement that we have here, we do need to fix this because if not, it will strip the new gear. We're gonna use our two and a half millimeter Allen wrench to loosen these screws and realign the gear mesh. Now you don't have to remove these screws. You really just need to loosen them so that the motor moves in and out. You can see the motion that it has here. And just snug these up so that the motor doesn't move around too much. Now the goal here is to have these gears as close together as we can and still have a little bit of movement in them. So you see how there's a little bit of motion between those gears? That's really what we're looking for. So move these pretty close together and double check that motion and snug up these screws. Now that the motor's kind of in place here, we can see that we have just that little bit of motion but these gears are not perfectly round, so we do need to check this on multiple parts 
to make sure things are aligned properly. And if we look here, we found a high side of our gear. I'm moving, but there's no real clicking here. So we just need to, to open that gear up just a little bit. And you can see now we have a little bit of motion. We can finally do our tightening here. Now we can close up our box and retighten our screws. And just as I mentioned before, don't tighten with the power driver. Always keep your hand tight. Now that our transmission is reassembled, we can bring our buggy back in and reinstall our transmission. First thing we want to do is make sure that these wires are clear so that we don't pinch them. There's also this little red adapter that goes inside of your drive shaft. Now you can install this in the drive shaft or you can install this in the transmission. Either way will do fine. Pull this spring-loaded assembly back and reinsert it into the transmission like so. Push this transmission down to the chassis and then into its little slots. There's little slots for it to slide into. Nice thing about this type of assembly is, is that when we go to reinstall this little spacer, if things aren't aligned properly on your transmission, this won't slip back into place. So you know you've got it properly reinserted once it does that. Once this is properly reinstalled, you will hear a pretty good click as this little keeper mechanism clicks back into place. We can reinstall our little spacer. And then finally reinstall our last screw. And always hand tighten as before. Now, once all of that's reinstalled, we can put our battery pack back in. Don't forget to reconnect all of your motor wires. As well as your fan wire. we can power on the system and do a final check. Well guys, hopefully you can see how easy it is to manage this repair in an Arma model. And if you benefited from this video, please consider giving me a thumbs up, a subscription, and don't forget to hit that bell. I do mention this in all of my videos. If you're not hitting that bell, you're not getting notified when the new content goes up. So make sure you go back and do that for all of your subscriptions. Well, that'll wrap it up for today, and I hope to see you in the next one.